Hi guys and uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we have the HGLRC F4 Flame. And now when I saw this, this actually caught my eye because it's like the F3 V3, but a lot better. Because this is one of the only flight controller, all-in-one flight controllers that actually mention, mentions the EMI, the electromagnetic field in the EMF. And they stated it has 90 plus capacitors. Now look at this beauty. I mean, these days, this is what you actually need. This looks like a quality product. I have not tested it, but I have high hopes for this. I will be putting it through my test lab environment where I induce noise and see the regulators, how they're going to cope with it, and if any of the noise passes anywhere, really. But I just wanted to talk to you guys about this. Now, uh, one of my followers and uh, supporters on Patreon uh, just said, why would something need uh, 300 amp you know capacity which which could handle 300 amp capacity and i didn't know at the time until i started testing the 2306 e max motor the 2750 kv with no propeller when you stop the motor from full throttle or 70 percent throttle and drop it back down to zero you get an inrush of over 50 amps i, I can't tell you exactly how much but it's 100 percent over 50 amps and the voltage spike is actually around 53 volts if not more um which is enough to basically just blow your quad into the pieces, really. Uh, and we're just talking about one motor without propellers. Now, imagine it with propellers, how, how devastating that would be. That would just be, uh, I don't know. I've already burnt in a flight controller with that motor and three ESCs on that motor and one of those motors. So uh, this guy should be the answer to something of that nature, I believe, and I hope so. I mean, it seems like it. I mean, they're not going to put these capacitors for nothing. So hopefully they know what they're doing, unlike the F3 V4, which is just absolute, I'm sorry, crap. Um, any all-in-one flight controller with a VTX built in, I would stay away from. And any, any all-in-one flight controller with ESC built in, I would also stay away from. Um, ones with OSD, they might have problems, but sometimes low ESR capacitors will fix your problems. This, I'm hoping, without a low ESR capacitor, we should work just fine. So, this I have huge hopes for. Let's actually take a look at what it comes with. It comes with a box, and it comes with just some nylon standoffs. That's all it comes with. That's it. It doesn't need to come with anything else, really. Uh, there is no JST plugs, which is awesome. It's solder. You have to have a little bit of some solder skill to actually solder these. Some people complain that they're tiny, but they're, they're really not. I mean, just practice and you'll get it. If you have to go buy those do-it-yourself little tiny soldering kits. I've actually started with those uh, when, when I first got started into the Arduino hobby, and that's how I learned how to solder. And just, to, just YouTube videos. Um, you don't need any professional around you. I've, I've never seen anyone solder in real life. So, <clears throat> other than myself. So, I mean, you could just learn it. If you wanted to learn it, you could just easily go learn it. So, now let's just take a look at the board and see the pinouts. Alright, so, right here is the battery inputs, these two right there. And let's see which one's positive and which one's negative. So, this would be positive where the... Uh, uh, current resistor is this is your current sensor so it has current sensing ability which is awesome so this would be I forgot which one okay so this is positive and this would be negative and this is where your VTX would go uh, you have your plus and your minus and your yellow wire which is the VTX this is where the camera would connect to your VTX but you'll insert the camera up here so it would go here, go to the OSD. This is the OSD. It'll pop in here. Like maybe this is the filtering for it, which would be pretty awesome. And look at all these capacitors. They're just amazing. And here's the uh, a coil right there, which will help with the current. So here's the OSD, and it'll just pop out here into your VTX, which is awesome. So the front the orientation is good too, since the camera's always in front, so you have the arrow up. So that'll help you, and the battery on the back or the side is also good. Uh, you have your boot button in case you brick it. It's very difficult to brick them nowadays. So, so yeah. Um, all right. Now, I love the ordering of the signals. So it's perfect beta flight. Signal one, signal two, signal three, and signal four. Perfect. Now there is no ground. So nowadays, I guess people don't like grounding their ESCs. I still have not tested this to see if it really does make a difference or not. Uh, I will be doing this soon on my upcoming videos uh, with the current setup I have. So let's just take a look now. Here's your positive and here's your negative and here's your signal. Same thing here, positive, negative signal, positive, negative signal, 
positive negative signal. Perfect. BB minus, BB plus. This is your buzzer. LED, 5 volt. Uh, this is, what is this? This is ground. And this is your LED and this is your 5 volt. And what else do we have here? Let's take a look at this side. Alright, so pretty obvious. S bus would go here, PPM would go here, and the spectrum would go here. And you have option if your receiver takes 3.3 volt, just set it to here, and here's its ground. Receiver takes 5 volt, set it here, and give it ground. And that is really it. It's just very simple. And here's TX, R1, and R1. This would be UART1 uh, right there. And what else do we have here? I think that's really it. It's, it's minimum, really. It doesn't have much else, yeah? That's it. That is it, really. So something I just noted here, when you, if you're going to solder this and you're going to stick your wire through, make sure it's soldered before you stick it through because here I could see a uh, possibility of hitting this capacitor and, and you don't want that. You might have some problems. So let's just take a look at these. This also, you have to be careful. So maybe I just without sticking it through the hole, just solder it, try right there. Here, just a little bit, be careful also. Where else? Let's take a look here. Here you're fine, kind of. If you just use a little bit, just have them pop up a little bit and solder them in. But overall, it looks very nice. I, I really, I'm really liking this board, and I really do hope it performs. I, I can't say anything about it just yet until we set it up. I'm gonna put it on a 2306 build to see if it can cope with it. A 2750 kV Emacs uh, motor. So this is how I'm really gonna test it, and I'm gonna just punch the basically just the throttle like crazy and try to burn it and hopefully it won't burn and I'm not going to add low ESR capacitor and see if we do get blackouts so that'll be something here and that's it we basically covered it it looks promising I like their products not all their products some products they have is just not good let's just say that the F3 V3 I like I loved and the F3 uh, the this one the F4 flame should be awesome as well so that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope it, you, you enjoyed it, you liked it, uh, it helped someone out there. And that's it. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, just feel free to let me know. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys. Take care.